baby beard. <laughs> Waited for you, Fry. This episode traumatized me as a young person. <laughs> my head is hurting again. <laughs> Where's my firstborn son? <laughs> God does not care about me masturbating. Your singing is bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> First get out of the bus, so you're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like myself becoming the protagonist of this well, podcast. <laughs> You've been in the Yeah, because you haven't learned anything. Shut up and take my podcast. <laughs> it's like a little old lady who's uh, operatically trained, who's in the middle of a robbery. <laughs> also, I and think go. That's and a very scene. that's a very rare instance of a shut up and take my podcast ending on an upwards inflection, which is kind of my ironic. Podcast. podcast, ironic for Australians. Uh, do you reckon uh, that? Do you reckon Americans? Do you know what I mean? That? Do you, reckon, do you think they notice that about us? Our dying that, falls. Yeah, I think so. No, 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 no. no. Our, our ending in upwards inflections. They absolutely do. Our crocodiles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, right in. Tell us. I don't. I didn't see the film, but the one where Kate McKinnon plays an Australian. Something about like a bunch of girls, and and they hire a stripper, and then they accidentally what the kill fuck the stripper. Are you talking what about movie anyway, is this? Kate McKinnon plays an Australian, and like. The accent's almost there, but one of the good things that she does is she does do the, can I get a calzone? Like, she, she does That's do good. the, like, That's the good. rising yeah. what, inflection. What American does a really good Australian accent besides her? Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, uh, Hugo, we- no, Hugo Weaving is. I keep forgetting got- <laughs> that Hugo Weaving is Australian. Yeah. Um, uh, what about Andy Serkis? I feel like he might be at Has a, he done one? I don't know, but it feels like he would have. He's done mm. like Afrikaans. Yes. He probably could. Yeah. <sighs> Andy Serkis, let he us know. He could definitely play a Australian through the means of CGI. <laughs> <laughs> get, him in mo- get him in a mocap suit now. <laughs> should, I, should I do it? Yeah. Should I do it? Yeah. Do well, welcome oh. everybody to Shut Up and Take My Podcast. The original, the undisputed, the unequivocal, the undeniable, the... Uh, Three s- years champion still running! <laughs> Australian Futurama Podcast that pits episode against episode in a bloody glorious gauntlet battle, as always, for your entertainment. Exclusively yours, always yours. And I'm joined here... Generally, as always, by Ellen. Of course I'm mad. That's been established. I am sometimes joined here by Mr. Chris. I'm coming down with a searing case of who gives a crap. <laughs> and, and we're, we're joined, joined by, by Sean. Sean. Um, <laughs> you knew that was coming. I know. <laughs> it always happens. Oh. Oh. A nope. Quote. Got nothing. You know what? I'm just going to leave it this week. <laughs> a quote from the show. No. Nope. There is... Well, no, it was, it, wasn't, it was never meant to be a quote from the show. Oh. It was just meant whatever to you want to say. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. It, it just was, became a quote from the yeah, show. Yeah, it just became a quote from the show. Yeah. It kind of ran away from me um, through no fault of my own. <laughs> Hi, <laughs> everyone. How are you doing? Of- yeah, good. This is, no, them. Oh. Uh, <laughs> let me think. Who are some fans that I know? Jose. Hey, Hello, Jose. Jose. Um, Neely. Uh, ne- Neely. Neely Stone. Neely Stone. Neely Stone. In Australian. <laughs> Neely Stone. She's, she's, she's very light. She's nearly one stone. We don't use the met. We use the metric system. Yeah, how here. does stone work? Like, what is one stone? You get a big stone from the okay. garden, <laughs> and you just hope that it's the right measurement, right? I don't know. We are up to <laughs> season seven. Notice that I don't do segues anymore. I just barrel through. You just What's completely a ignore everyone. Season seven, <laughs> episode ten. Look at him go. The near death wish, which is what. Uh, like Death Wish, but like near uh, death. But, it like uh, a play on uh, words. Uh, oh yeah, it's a play on words. <laughs> I guess. Uh, I guess. What is it? <laughs> and the near death star, where we go to. Yeah. 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 It, is that largely it? But That's pretty much. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. It is. It is a play on the place as well as a Death Wish, uh-huh. which is also a movie that has <laughs> Charles Tarantino. Bronson. Oh no, that's Death Note. Yeah, no, no death, no, death Wish. No, you're was, thinking of you're thinking of. No, I was I was thinking of Death Note. And I then was I thinking said of that Death Wish. Loud. That's a Tarantino flick, right? Death Wish. No, no, that's Death Proof. That's Death Proof. Uh, death Proof. Then there's also Death Racer. Yes, which has the new one has Jason Statham in it. But yeah. then there's Death Wish, which has Charles Brunson. I feel like I just there's a, a lot of death <laughs> movies. Death. What about Death, death Coming? Be- becomes her. Ah, it's a good film. Meryl Streep and Bloody Goldie Horn. What about Death Standing? Stranding. Death. Oh, I'm very excited for that. What is I want to raise a baby. 
with Guillermo del Toro. And the PlayStation 5. <laughs> and Mads Mikkelsen. Has rumble control, so like you'll probably be able to feel it you kick. You feel the baby. You'll feel the baby kick in a better way because the rumble uh, control in a better console. way. Yeah, because the rumble control is better. I'm bringing better than the womb. It sounds, like you're, saying, womb. It sounds like you're saying a rumple controller. I am a talking rumple, about a rumple. A rumple. That's what it's, no, a rumple. A rumple. That's what a I'm rumple talking controller. About. Yeah, because Chris new. is Chris is rumpled stool skin. That's what I was thinking. Don't <laughs> tell anyone. I've got to give all those babies back now. What just happened? The director for this episode <laughs> is Mr. Lance Kramer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. <laughs> Lance Kramer for the very first time to Hello, this podcast. Hello, Lance. Uh, Lance. Welcome. Lance, how are Sorry you? Sorry you had to be introduced like this. Now, Lance, if you are listening... Um, <laughs> which, which, which you are. Well, Hold no, up. he actually wouldn't be because I tried to reach out to him on social media and the man's busy. Oh. So He yeah. might still have time for podcasts. Maybe. I know all of our listeners are busy people. They're lovely people. They are. How many of them are there that are busy? All of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good, good blanket answer there, Chris. <laughs> I think I'm busy. <laughs> really You're busy. Ass. We're busy. <laughs> Look, we're all bloody busy. Exactly. It's the 21st century. It's the century of busy. He's maybe just spending too much time, you know, in finding people with the last name Kramer to fight. Oh. Kramer versus Kramer. Versus Kramer. Interesting. It can only be two. <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> it is a movie. <laughs> it's it's a movie, seen. don't you know? <laughs> <laughs> the writer for this episode is Eric Horstead. Hey! Hi. Eric Horstead, who is back from Bots and the Bees, which is at the very beginning of a season, which also had our good friend Paul Goodman. Uh, good friend Paul Goodman yes. on the episode. So he's he's back. He'll, he's a good man. He's a good friend. He is the uh, most pr- pr- uh, prolific writer for Futurama as well. Paul Goodman? No, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he has well, done a sum never, total of none. <laughs> he never said... <laughs> And if you, you know what, we should get Paul. He's a he's a he's a published writer, self published, but he is a published he's writer. Published, yeah. He should do some Futurama fiction, fiction. for us. Which Paul? Salt. No, Goodman. Oh, and hmm. then Salt can critique it because he's a critic. Yes. Ah, uh, a thought, seamless friendship. I thought both were writers. Uh, no, Salt doesn't count. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Write to us at <laughs> at Baby Media. Do you want to be considered not a writer? <laughs> Don't Write worry. to us at Baby we, Head Media and we, we will tell you you're not. On the podcast, we can out you as a <laughs> shitty writer. <laughs> Got too much self-esteem? <laughs> Come we see can, us. We can cure that. Uh, can we? The air date for this episode <laughs> is August 15th, 2012, which is exactly one month and seven days after my 21st birthday. What, what was the numbers again? August 15th, 2012, which is mm. exactly one month and... What did I say? Seven days after my 21st birthday. That's like 28 days, roughly. 24 days? Well, I don't know how many from, days are in from, August. So. From my cousin's birthday. Because my cousin's birthday is really easy to remember. I think it's... It's September 11. S- oh. It's easy to remember his birthday. Oh. <laughs> no, <bro. laughs> I never forget. I never oh, forget. No. <laughs> And introducing Estelle Harris. If you don't know who Estelle Harris is, that's George Costanza's mother uh, from Seinfeld. I thought it sounded oh. so familiar. Yeah. But Why don't you? No, that's not him. That was Pillow Guy. <laughs> it's Pillow Guy and also Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, <laughs> now who wants to run down the plot? Jesus. I forgot. Well, I forgot that we had to do I that. I shotgun not. Okay, I'll, I'll do it, I guess. Yeah. Fry hates his, um, well, uh, Farnsworth after getting a package award. Were you trying to figure out what his relationship was? No, because it's just a lot of greats. I was like, what about, no, it's fine. Uh, So (laughs) he's like, I hate you. I'm going to find other relatives. Uh, And he finds them in the near Death Star, a retirement village. He's like, hey, you're great. Let's go meet your son. son." That's right, because they're his, anyway. Yes. They're Um, Farnsworth's parents. They're Farnsworth's parents. Which makes them at least... 190 years old. That's right. Maybe. Well, because Farnsworth is 160. 60. They might be young. Would, yeah. Would you, yeah. Adults. So anyway, one, one, this fine. isn't the plot. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, uh, they Farnsworth is like, I hate you, your parents. And then it finds out they the, the parents were really bad to Farnsworth. Oh, no. But then it turns Aww. out then Farnsworth runs away and they have to go chase him at... The farm that Farnsworth grew up in. The Farmsworth. 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 And that was a missed opportunity, though. And then, uh, and then uh, it turns out that Farnsworth had a 
crazy brother who was a crazy man, but it turns out that that was Farnsworth. Do we remember what his name was? And the cats in the cradle and it's all of a spoon. Hector? Um, no. He- no. Lewis? He- Louis? Floyd. 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 Hey. Floyd. And, and that's the episode. It's basically, and then the parents go back into the near death star yeah. in a retirement village. Yeah. No, but, uh, but. Slightly um, altered. Farnsworth has plugged in their retirement plan, so Aww. they get to live out in uh, a, a virtual version of their old Farmsworth. farm, and uh, they get to play around with him as a child and them in their in their youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you reckon a farm's worth? <laughs> <laughs> you I were like germinating that. on that. that was I was like, does this work? Yeah, it works. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you see, went, in you went, podcast, you don't hear that. You went oddly still. I was like, what's Sean doing? He's forming a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Is he listening for something? I was actually remembering back in, I don't know if you you might remember this, Chris, in the early days of Shut Up, where I would I used to try and make a pun during the intro. Oh my God, you did. And I and I think my best one was I said, <laughs> shut up and take my podcast, where we milk Futurama for all its fans worth. I... I... That was your best. <laughs> that was my best. That was... <laughs> was... You should have left it there. You really, I did. Yeah. You really peaked early, we, man. We peaked super. <laughs> we, yeah. <laughs> and then you never did it again. You know, we have weird analytics sometimes. Do you know that? Like weird episodes get really popular. Oh uh, yeah, well, there's a very strange episode that's our most listened to. Yeah, and oh, it... no, no, the Futurama Holiday Spectacular is one of our most listened to episodes. Well, that one I think because it has the word Christmas in it. Uh, you know, as in more holiday. Chris. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it just because uh, it has the word Futurama in it? <laughs> that would suck. Surely. Like if we just get all our episodes and just put in the word Futurama. People don't That's re- actually what I've been doing on the YouTube page. People don't realise right. that. That it's a Futurama podcast I've until put, we specifically put Futurama in the title. Yeah, I've put the word Futurama podcast in the title of every YouTube episode. Oh, I didn't Fantastic. realize that. And I wondered why. Yeah. Oh, sneaky boy. Stupid. People be stupid. Hey, speaking of <laughs> stupid, <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on? Did you think it was stupid the way they handled their thoughts on The Matrix, Mr. Yeah, the what the Ma- Matrix oh. is like, oh, let's get this out of the way I fast. I could feel, yeah. Holy right, you, shit. You just go, Chris, you just go, because you've got a lot of emotions that you need to get out in one uh, fell swoop. A, a bit of a quick backstory. The Matrix happens to be Chris's, uh, one of his, one of his more enjoyed. One of his, he, he definitely enjoys it a top, little bit. Top just, 10, just a little bit. Top five. Okay. Yeah. I've seen it over 25 times. He kind Jesus. of enjoys it. It's a good movie. I don't know. They said it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. They, they said, said it was, it was very, the, you know. What did they say? They said it was shit, hokey, yeah, hokey or something. Stupid sci fi premise. Yeah. I mean, prove them wrong, Chris. I hate that. But they proved themselves wrong. They said it did work out. Yeah. And that we could use people's and we could batteries. Use it. I don't know. It's a so, dumb gimmick, and that's fine. It what, did, good. Did, was the Matrix like slammed at all when it came out? No, it was super praised. Yeah. What about the sequels? But also, like. We don't. Talk, Talk about, about the sequels. What I about mean, the new one? <laughs> new one's going to be wild. But also, like, using people as batteries, but, like, I feel like capitalism does that, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Well, I mean, it's... It, the when, idea of using people as, a, as some kind of force, as some kind of energy is, yes. like, yes. But, like, also... <laughs> it happens. The film makes life. way more sense when you consider the original casting, which was Sean... Will Smith. <laughs> who's a... Black man. Yeah. And Sandra Bullock. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Sandra really? Bullock was the, ori- was the original choice for I've Trinity. I've seen this movie 25 times and I didn't yeah. know that. <laughs> Imagine, now now put The Matrix in with yeah, Will Smith Will, and Sandra Bullock together. But Will together. Smith and Sandra hot, Bullock weren't it? in that film that you no. saw 25 times. That's so true. That's there's, true. there's a pass. Also, for like the two people that are probably unaware of this, yes, Will Smith decided to do Wild Wild West instead of The Matrix. How did that work out for you? Real good. He got a rap career. Will, right? Will good. Mm. Will good. Will good. Come back once more. I'm That's the, no, oh. oh. No, sorry. We're uh, Going straight, straight to the wild, wild west. We're going straight to the wild, wild, wild. Wow, what a piece of shit. I can't believe we had to watch that film. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we actually talked about it. We should uh, talk uh, about this soon. episode of Futurama, maybe. Good Shut point, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Futurama's good. And so is the Matrix. I'll fight anyone. Oh, you know what I love? <laughs> no one's fighting you, Chris. Hermes <laughs> and Zoidberg shared a joke together. Uh, there were a lot of shared community. Like, Hermes, like, and Hermes Bender. is getting along with everyone lately. Yeah. Like Hermes and Zoidberg actually shared a joke and there was no... And had a moment and together. There was, but, and 
even though Zoidberg went out of it, was like, ah, no, there was no punchline at Zoidberg's expense. Hermes was quipping and Bender was like, you're on fire, man. Maybe Hermes gave everyone a raise recently. Oh, uh, maybe. And they're just like, yeah. Or they were just really high. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe just everyone's more well behaved around grandparents. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, they I, are. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm not. There's a lot my grandparents don't know about. I feel me. like my grandparents. Oh, okay. That not on my, ominous. not on my mum's side. Not, not the Italian grandparents. <laughs> Shit that I definitely hide from them. Hey, but- Ellen, <laughs> you are, you, you are going out wearing that tonight. <laughs> What yeah, because yeah, because they're from. Is that, Br- a, is that a, what are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, because they're from Bro- Brooklyn, don't you know? Hey, uh, hey, Ella, get over here! If you hey, could, if forget you could, about if it. You could tell your grandparents one thing that they didn't know right now. What would it be? They oh, don't speak that- English, stupid. <laughs> Wait, what would I tell them that yeah. th- that they would not want to hear? Yeah, 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 something like that. I don't know. Oh, I don't believe in God. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> fucked before marriage. I'd probably say that I'm bisexual. I don't think my grandparents would be cool with that. <laughs> Oh, if I if Ooh, I if I told a turn. if I told my grandparents that I was no longer a Christian, yeah, they would go to the near death star. Yeah, I they'd just go to near death. Yes, and then pass that. Yeah, into, into death. death. Yeah, and then not to God. <laughs> <laughs> was that was just, that was just, that was not real. Was there a homage to another very weird fucking film? Tron? Uh, no, I no. was going to say The Cell. I don't know if you've seen it. Oh, I've heard of it, but I haven't. Is that it? Uh, what it's, is that? It's by a filmmaker who, like, previously was mainly mainly doing music videos. So oh, like, those people are wild. Yeah, mm. so this film is shot like a fucking music video, like very 90s imagery with like people in cages and like Jennifer Lopez is in it and also Vincent D'Onofrio is, is like... Is this a 90s film? Yeah, it's yeah. very 90s. And like, Sounds 90s. And like basically Vincent D'Onofrio is like a, a serial killer... Of course uh, he is. ...who like leaves women... In a, in a place where, like, slowly they will drown and basically they've caught him but there's one woman left and so they're trying to, like, basically f- figure out where she's located before she dies. And so they have this se- this uh, this secret technology where basically J-Lo, as, like, a, a profiler or whatever, can, pl- like, plug into his fucking psyche and so the whole thing's in his, like, fucking psyche and, like, the the cord that they use to, like, plug in looks like licorice. God, I remember when J-Lo was an action star. <laughs> Does, you remember any, that? does anyone remember does anyone know this film? Or am I, I know, just fucking insane? Got, okay, after working in a video store Please. for five years, I know the front cover. Please. I know it exists. Okay, thank you. Right God. now we no. represent the three different reactions to that story. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Has heard of it. Passing understanding, completely alienated, and Fantastic. has no frame of reference. I will say, oh, I think his name is Sells Ta- a character in Dragon Ball Z. True. Oh, mm. I think the director's name is Tarsum Singh. It's true. And like I would <laughs> While I don't think The Cell is a good film, he's made a film called The Fall, which is an amazing film. Like the Does fucking... he strictly do one syllable movies? I guess. The so. Cell, The Fall. But like Lee Pace. The Bird. <laughs> the Call. The Birds is a sequel, don't you know? To what? To the, the Word. Bird. To the Bird. The word. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Should have really. I'm just picking up what you're putting to down. <laughs> to <egg>. <laughs> <laughs> Which oh one was God. made first? The chronology is confused, though. We're not sure. We're not sure. Um, but yeah, but people check out The Fall because it is a breathtaking film and like there's hardly any CGI in it and Lee Pace is in it and he's wonderful and it's made by that same bongers director. Anyway. Bongers. Bongers fucking director. A bongers director. All right, sidebar done. Continue talking about the Fry's episode. Fry's delivery outfit. Can we please go into Fashion Corner? It's very ACDC, I it? love it. Yeah. With the fucking... Mm. Well, it's not so much a school uniform. It's like a suit, but with it's shorts. It's a suit, but instead... <laughs> You've got shorts, which I feel There's like fucking in, celebrities that do that. Like it's like a I fashion feel like statement. I've definitely seen that. They're I work like a lot of shorts. I, yeah. I definitely I work a lot of weddings, and I feel like during do people do that. Yeah, during wedding season Australia in Australia is as hot. well. I don't care. I've done I've done weddings that have been like thirty degrees, thirty thirty three, thirty five. What's that in Fahrenheit? I don't fucking 70? know. Seventy. I'm not doing it. <laughs> but like. Yeah, you 70? don't want to be in a full suit all fucking day. I do. Yeah. I, do I my brother passed out at my dad's wedding because oh, he was in a out suit. Out of love? Because oh. it was it was, he was just so happy. It was thirty seven out in the sun. We did it outside. And uh, of he, course, yeah. Uh, Can we was, just let the audience do the conversion instead of us doing the conversion? Okay. Yeah. I literally did not attempt to do the conversion. No, I, you so never I, do the research. I never I, re- I do the research. I, I just don't phone. do math. 
But yeah, he passed out. It was funny. Yeah. Uh, speaking of fashion okay? corner, yeah, he's fine. Uh, wink. Yeah, uh, wink. So, yeah, we talked about the suit. I, I think I don't know. Men's shorts need to sort themselves out because what is and as a as the fashion guru that you are, I'm actually in the process of trying to find shorts to wear. What are good shorts to wear? Jorts. Okay. <sighs> no. Do yes. not listen to this man. Okay. Second opinion. Stay the fuck away. Um, I, Oh, jean shorts. It depends if they're cutoffs, like Daisy Duke styles. Fuck. <laughs> then you can pull them up. Ass, um, ass hugging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does Soy see wear? The, see the cheek. He seems like a shorts person. <laughs> soy boy. Yeah, he seems like a shorts man. I like he's just become soy now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next question. He's good for um, me, but I don't have him for, all the time. For the audience who don't know, should we contextualize who Soy is? I think we have. We've had many fuck We've- stories. <laughs> Enough! <laughs> he's a piece of not mm, meat. Yes, he's a piece of tofu. He's a piece of soy. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, a, yeah, he's a guy yeah. that I'm seeing. And they were, yeah, they wear shorts. He and we're just shorts. really public about it. Yeah, we are. It's bad, baby. I don't know. Yeah. Um, people like to hear. Uh, no, shorts. I would say go for something that's like not jorts. Don't go for the big fucking camo <laughs> weird cargo pockets. What about like track just, pants, but just, I cut no, them off to look no, like shorts. No, Those are no. cool. Although streetwear does that a lot. Yeah. I have seen a lot of streetwear where it's like like kind of cut off. The jogger thing, the jogger style pants are really in fashion at the moment. Not that they're, you know... <laughs> Chris is just nodding his head repeatedly. I'm I, would just, I would just like go for things that, yeah, look like trouser pants, but just kind of like... Maybe with a nice cuff. You don't want them too long, but then you don't want them like. Yeah, I'm not half. a three. I'm not a three quarters man. Chinos. Yeah, chino shorts. Chino shorts. Essentially, you know what? yeah. Essentially, they are. They yeah. are on board the chino train now. Yeah. See, Ellen, that's how you do it. That's fashion. Boom. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> what else did you, you like? taught me? All I La know. Barbara's. <laughs> the Barbara was in this episode. I learned it from watching you. <laughs> La Barbara oh, yeah, had an amazing she dress. She had this pink, uh, I think it was halter neck gown, a lot of cleave, um, very flowy, and it had a kind of uh, from the wrists um, flowing material. It was very, very cute. And I love light pink on La Barbara. It looked really, really good. Mm. Question, can we shorten the word cleave even yeah. further? I was asking, is cleave a word? Cleave. <laughs> yeah. Cleave. Cle- cleavage. Yeah, cleavage. Oh, no, but no, also I know, to cleave. I know what cleave means. As in like cleave, but like has, cut has, through is something. Is cleave an official shortening of cleavage? That's or what is I that say. Just, okay. I so what, do you want it to be like clev? Yeah. <laughs> but that's oh, not. That's some sweet clev. <laughs> but you you don't say cleavage. I know. You do, say clev. Do you not? Shit, I'm doing this all wrong. <laughs> I mean, I don't, but. That's what. No wonder women don't like me. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's the way you do Australian <laughs> nicknames. You add letters like Clevy. bottle. O. We don't call it a bottle station. Cleavage. Just a bottle and a bottle. Cleavage. Cleavage. Clevo. 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 We nailed it. Anything else in fashion corner? Because otherwise, I have something in death tally. No, you you go ahead. I'm done. Yeah, the the robot that uh, the the that. arm the arm robot that lets you yeah. into a near death star yeah. boomy. got We're taken the boomy. fuck out. I mean, its eyes seem to still be working. Yeah, he's he's got a couple of seconds before he's out. I guess it's like after you're decapitated. Yeah, yeah. You, your eyes go and then you shit. What was that guy who like he got beheaded and he was just like, "Can you put um some newspaper down in my basket? What so I can read it." Is this in Futurama that no, 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 I missed? No, this is in what? real life history. <laughs> Did like, it actually happen? Yeah. Did they give him the newspaper? Yeah. That's kind. Oh. <laughs> Small mercies. They did cut off his head as well. Small mercies, Ellen. (laughs) Do you reckon he knew what was on the newspaper before he read it or was it like a surprise? I think he would have been like... I mean, look, I would have been surprised too if my head had been fucking... Capital punishment to be banned after one week. Births, weddings, deaths. My name's (laughs) here. Oh, ain't that a coinky dink? That's (laughs) nice. Oh, yeah. And all the um, the, uh, the, uh, award, uh, award nominees from the delivery, the Clippies. Oh, they're uh, all dead. Can I just say, this oh. was a very... Dark. Look, and I know that I've just made a clowning show about murder. But and this now you was do a, too, listeners. <laughs> yes, I'm just plugging my little... Uh, but, like, this was a very, very tonally uh, whiplash kind of episode. Love. Like, they really <laughs> went hard on some of those uh, graphic very, deaths. very graphic, what was it? gruesome... One was, one was hit by a bus. One was, like, the Train? robot... Oh, it was a human... 
by the bus. The human was hit by the bus. The robot was hit by the train. The another, uh, it was a human that had been mauled by a tiger. A lion. A lion. A lion. Yeah. Mm. And Sal, with his 103rd job, was putting him into the trash. <laughs> into the bucket. Into the bucket. Yeah. Wash bucket. The body bucket. Uh, yeah. well, where else are you going to put it? Yeah, where else are you going to put the things you kill? Um, Sal didn't kill it. <laughs> he kills the delivery that, boy. Sal blamed it on the lion. If you kill something, you put it in your tum tum. That's what it's there for. It's like a big box. I agree. Uh, I'm vegetarian. Oh yeah, you are <laughs> still a human though. It's different. Yeah, it's like is lo- that it's long pig? Yeah. If it's if they consent, it's vegan. <laughs> Correct? Mm. No. Yeah. No, because you can't even have honey. That's stupid. Or I don't. Do you reckon we have any vegan listeners? Yes, I'm Look, sure I we just, have vegan listeners. I just, Jose, I just, are you vegan? I just think Jose. honey is fine because it protects the bees and they don't keep their honey. Like Ellen, it's wage <laughs> theft. Let's be honest. Let's be completely honest. It's wage theft. There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. <laughs> Where did Futurama land on honey? Because they were, it was all in, there was that episode with the Futurama holiday spectacular. With the, there's a fucking bees everywhere in Futurama. Yeah, and wasps. Yeah, we almost lost fucking fry. Fry. Fucking mm. fry. <sighs> hey. Yes, this was a very dark episode. I also had a lot of deaths, and then. Uh, I do fuck. What I really even, love um, yeah. visually, uh, as far as the light side of it, is the. Um, the green, the internet, you know, the same thing whenever they go yeah, to the internet, yeah. they yeah. the green outline. Yeah. Yeah. Like I think visually, especially I going like to that. the near death star and getting to see all the rows of bodies, like they're just, once again, they, they knock the 3D out of yeah. the park. But also even like the, the sad reality of retirement homes, yeah. that was quite dark. Yeah. As, as humorous as some of the uh, Farnsworth stuff is, it's really like the bit where... Uh, he runs away to their old farm and they find him and he's just crying in bed. It's really upsetting mm. to see. I don't mm. know. I just like, I, I have such a soft spot for People when, crying. but you know, it's like depicted in a way where you can tell someone's just crying because they're sad and lonely and hurt as opposed to crying out of frustration or, um, you know, when you like, little kids and they cry and they're like, Ugh, and they're like, Ugh, like really trying to get the tears out so that they can cause a reaction. Do you know what I mean? And like, and the, the, the oh, way oh, you like tell dizzy. that is if you're just like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> oh, fuck. Please don't have a vertigo don't have a attack, vertigo attack Sean. because you're trying to cry. <laughs> it would be really, and then I would cry really no sad effort. in more than one way. But like, you know, like you see kids do that and then yeah, you go, do yeah. you want a lolly? And they go, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's just like, seeing that kind of really lonely cry depicted, I was just like, oh, like, oh, it's, it's really sad watching Farnsworth mm. just completely revert to like, my parents don't love me and they don't ever spend any time with me and blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, oh, this is quite... Oh. Also, he has a brother now, which yeah. is still alive, maybe. Uh, if we oh, ever we hear... do not know. What is he? He's a rodeo clown, isn't he? He's it? a rodeo clown. And Bender was about to say that, uh, I and don't also, know if it's relevant, but a couple of years ago, some Floyd I came don't up. think it has a happy ending because like... Bender goes to say it and Fry's like, ah, oh, and Bender just has this really sad look on his face. So. Mm. And then I killed him. So. That's I'm sorry. What I was radio thinking. clowns are pretty hardy people, though. Shout out to the radio, uh, radio clowns. The radio, the radio clowns. Radio clowns and radio you know, clowns. They, They're radio clowns. <laughs> yeah. You I know guess. the radio clowns? They, they taunt radios with their red, <laughs> their red blankets. That's what they're called, right? They wave blanket, red blankets. blankets. Rave, <laughs> rave, wave. Wave. I think you're confusing radio <laughs> clowns with what are they called in Spanish? Bullfighters. Bullfighters. Uh, yeah. Mask. No. Matadors. No. Matadors. Matadors. I was going to say masqueraders. I was going to say toreadors, but that's wrong. We both that's had vampire <laughs> on the brain. Yeah, that's right. You vampire. don't want a vampire on your brain. Oh, oh no. Oh, I do. Uh, yeah, there was a very. This is a very heartwarming um, ending. Like in in homage to other kind of sci-fi things. Not that this. This came out before them, but like San Junipero, mm. Black Mirror, um, and also I don't know if you've seen About Time. Oh, it's Is that such the love, a good the cross time travel love story. It's such a good film with, uh, with Rachel McAdams, Rachel McAdams and Donald Gleason, and it basically like all the men in Donald Gleason's family have the ability to time travel, but it's like very specific. Like you have to know where you're going. Um, I think you can only go back. Good. And um, and like the the film's not really about that. You th- like you go into it thinking it's going to be some crazy like 
time tr- like time travel presence, but it's really more just a really heartfelt family film. And there's Aww. a bit where he basically he like can't go back any further than a certain point because it'll fuck up a, a timeline basically. And he like his sperm will be different, so he'll have Ooh. a different child essentially. And so he's got another baby on the way, and his dad. Um, is dead at this point. And so he knows that once this baby is born, he can't go back in time and see his father again. And so they basically have like one more time together. And so they go back to like, you know, a day when he was like a little boy on the beach and he and his dad just kind of hang out. And so it was like the ending of this episode felt a lot like that to me where it's like, you know, to revert like to your childhood self with your parents and kind of like just relive that for a day. It's awful. Is that kind of sad? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Was that, it, pr- was that pretty much the whole plot of the movie? About time. Yeah. No, okay. it's a really sweet film. I very much recommend you did, it. You said, well, you've convinced me because you said sperm will be different. Yeah. I was thinking and, blue. Yeah. What? You said <laughs> it was different. So I immediately think different color. Yeah. Like <laughs> light, light neon blue. Yeah. Yeah. Ejaculate in listeners, UV. Ejaculate. Listeners, ejaculate. if your ejaculate is ejaculate. Uh, blue, please see a fucking doctor because you've clearly drunk an eight ball, a <laughs> magic eight ball. <laughs> and, That's very uh, hard you to need do. Prognosis, to go- <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what's that the joke from where someone's like, yeah, they work. My friend uh, uh, asked it if he drank the insides if he would die and it said yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been done a few times actually. <laughs> Um, yeah, very sweet ending. Mm, mm. This There's a few. Tab. Oh, go on. Yeah, you go. Oh, oh, you go. Oh, thank you. Thank Fuck. you. There's, um, about time. There's a, uh, there's a really dark tone to the whole thing. Um, particularly when like, uh, Bender says like, it's got a heft, like the weight of, uh, Fry's award has like a heft that like, you could cave someone's skull in. Oh yeah. Did and you say heft? Uh, maybe. Oh, it's, I love something that word. like that. It's a good heft. word. Um, but, uh, Scruffy, who's next to him says, I know, right. <laughs> And I was just like, whoa. Yeah, Scruffy has a past. Whoa. Well, he's also a janitor. Yeah, yeah. I assume he's cleaned up. I assume he's killed. (laughs) You know janitors. Yes. What's on your CV? Have killed. Well, Well, (laughs) you're in. Like that kind of like typifies, I feel like, the dark tone to the whole thing. Like everything seems to have like this darker edge to it. Yeah. I Mm. wonder if that's so they can... I don't know, so that the the sweetness will be kind of more... More yeah, so. Yeah, maybe. More, more so. Stand out. Sean, you were going to say something. No, I wasn't. Okay. <laughs> no, but I was just going to say, like, Eric Horst... I mean, it's probably Eric Horstead as well, just getting sick of doing what, what quote, he calls light claptrap, and then he's like, I'm going to do a dark episode now. Ooh. Yeah, maybe. He didn't say that at all. I just put those words into his mouth. Wow. Don't do that to our guests. <laughs> <laughs> Eric. Why is he coming on? I don't know. Yay. Maybe. <laughs> what? Was this previously oh, discussed? Oh, listeners, remind me to tell you something at the end of the epi- this episode. They're not going to remind you, Sean. You will. T- just tweet me. <laughs> if I don't say it, tweet me, and then I'll tweet you back and let you know individually. Eric might Eric might come on the show. He would, maybe. I don't know what he's. I don't know if he's working on Disenchantment at the moment or not. I'm not sure. Uh, I think he is. We should stop conjecturing about who we could guilt into getting on the show just because we were really Yeah, so let's stop it. conjecturing. Let's just do it. Let's yes. just guilt them. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to guilt them, just fucking do it. Passively, aggressively slide in their, into their DMs. Hey, Eric. <laughs> Glad you're finally talking to me, right? Oh. <sighs> yeah. Should we... Uh, Bender functions? Was there anything? Uh, no, he was uh, No, he had some... No, there oh, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ability. has a big old switch in him that gives him a 40% chance of not killing... Oh, that's the right. They use leader. him to, to get Jack into, into, into the, the Matrix. <laughs> Basically. Um, anything else? No, that's no, that's, that's the bendery. That's the bendery function. Is your chair alright? He's there to. My uh, chair is falling apart. Oh okay. yeah, my chair is falling apart. He's there to boost the self-esteem of Hermes. That's a function. You can just use that chair in front of me. That's probably the best chair. That would be so noisy. Yes, it would. That's okay. I'll I'll deal. I'll perch. <laughs> <laughs> like a bird. <laughs> oh. Prey. So. Well, pray tell us, what did you think of the episode? Oh. 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 It all just turned into birds. <laughs> oh. 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 I like this episode. Good. Hmm. I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked it. I actually really like the retro kind of aesthetic that Futurama didn't deliberately like go ahead. Like 
Yeah, so like the the um the where they're in the the universe. Uh, sorry, in the in the v- virtual village. virtual reality kind of thing. It's the same as when they were sort of the same as when they were in the internet. Yeah, yeah. Back in like season two and season three, and like they've copied it verbatim, but it kind of has like a weird kind of like retro edge where the series has kind of like lived its own retro kind of stylings. Like you see that that's like two thousands y kind of styles. 2000s copying 80s kind of styles. And you're yeah. like, yeah, I get this. This is cool. Like, you know, the aesthetic is aesthetic, aesthetic. No, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm processing that. Aesthetic. Did you think you were losing us, Chris? <laughs> no, I think I was losing myself. Oh, okay. I, I had to say the word aesthetic, <laughs> aesthetic until time. it rings true. You're just yeah, going to get right. back onto track. I just think of Vaporwave. And- <laughs> <laughs> do, do, do. I uh, too enjoy the aesthetic. Yeah, it did have a good good feel Aesthetic. about it. Good eye feel. <laughs> good eye vision feel. feel. It really felt good on my eyeballs. Um, it, it, interesting you talk about aesthetic as well, like the whole uh, timeless feel of Futurama in that it's kind of like, I guess, grandparents always come from... <laughs> <laughs> they always come always last. Always come from the same time period where it's like a farm and shit and like it's all kind of like... Uh, a bit antiquated, uh, antiquated, antiquated. Um, you know, like even though, like Farnsworth's parents would still have been in the future. It's yeah. just like it's this completely rustic feel that we're going back to. Yeah, time is very c- cyclical in Futurama. Yeah. So they just keep going back to the eighties every couple of hundred years. It's great. Yeah, yeah. or to the fifties. Yes. Yeah. And I yeah quite literally the tone hey, of this hey. was really like. I don't want to say edgy because that implies Ooh, like edgy. I'm edgy, melancholic. Uh, not melancholic, but it was like it was definitely ballsier, like in tone. Like I darker. feel like it's darker. It's, it's definitely literally yeah, darker in tone. But like definitely not trying literally. to feel out where that line was in terms of like, oh fuck it, let's take these jokes just just like dial it up, knock it up a notch, bam. bam. <laughs> um, oh bam. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, and I really appreciated like the gumption of this episode where it's like, come on, let's let's do it. Let's go a bit harder. It's kind of interesting to see what happens when you match up a really a, a veteran writer and Eric Horstead with a first time director and yeah. Lance Kramer. Like and you're right, it does seem to strike that balance between someone that's very clear and has the understanding of the world and the characters and how to kind of formulate that together with a director that can give it a bit of a new edge, like to use that word. It's mm. like, it just does have that both that new and old marrying together and it does push the jokes a little bit further without seeing, seeming family guy-esque. Yeah, like, yeah, because there's nothing worse than it. Like like I said, like edgy can be such a yeah, I'm edgy. negative thing. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, it, it just means like you're trying to, be offensive for offensive sake. It can be a like, shallow descriptor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Whereas, like, what I mean is more. It's it's getting closer to that. Oh, I don't want to laugh, but I do. But and I like, will. Yeah, yeah. It's the uh, it's the clown. It's the buffon thing of like you have to kill the audience and get away with it. You have to stick the knife in without letting the audience know. And oh. then after the show finishes and they finish laughing, they go. Oh. I've gone on record as saying my oh, no. favourite Futurama joke of all time to date it's is the Bender killing his kid. My firstborn son. To the, giving giving <laughs> it to, to the, the robot, robot devil. devil. Yeah. I uh. love it. And it's one of the darkest jokes Futurama has pulled. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty fucked. <laughs> I think we're near a vote. Ooh. Are we? Cool. Yeah. Who wants to go first? So it is the current winner, which is... What's it called? <laughs> free will hunting it's because they both have three word names so i was thinking of this episode so mm. the current winner free will hunting against this episode near death wish so i'm actually going to be going for the current episode that is winning hey. which means free will hunting is getting the, the the vote for me for me I I mean, first of all, I adore Bender-centered uh, episodes. I really love how they went. 
both these episodes do a lovely thing in that they take an established setting from the original series. For Bender, it was the robot planet. And for Farnsworth in this episode, it's the near death sphere planet whatever the fuck it is star yeah star thank you so they both have a retro feel but both of them are kind of treading new ground in that Farnsworth we're dealing with the relationship with his parents and kind of fleshing out his characterization and putting it in context that's not just fry for a change Mm. because usually any familial relationships is Farnsworth and his great 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 grandpa yeah so it's kind of nice to see that difference in a relationship and a a really strikingly wholesome ending there's no punchline there's no it's just literally Farnsworth getting a chance to play with his parents um with Bender I just really loved what I liked about while free will hunting didn't necessarily have a lot of the heart what it did have is a really good sci-fi premise and we're we're tackling something that a lot of sci-fi has which is you know what makes a robot a robot and can a robot have free will and where does that line go and where does it end and how can we push past it? And it was just a great way of giving Bender autonomy and authority in a narrative. Um, so I think for me, free will hunting has the go. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to jump in. Uh, so just to talk about this episode that we just watched a little bit. Uh, no, fuck it. I'll go for my vote. I'm 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 on the same boat. Uh free will hunting I think was just a bit more cohesive, but I did so much admire this episode for taking risks. Like like it's it's pushing the comedy a little bit further. It has such an element of heart and I really really did love that ending. I think what I would have liked is just a lot of the a, a few of the jokes like did fall short for me. Um and I think that comes from kind of like you know, pushing out that edge, but also like I would have liked a bit more depth to the heart. Like um, the, it, w- it was a very like twisty or like reveal kind of thing where it's like, oh no, but we did love you. Like we'd spend all this time on you, but it, it was kind of like a little bit forced. I would have liked maybe um, a, a, an episode that does like a similar thing is the uh, – Leela and like Leela not wanting to find out about her parents kind of thing with the fuck is this the episode it's the one where we find out that Leela's parents have actually been looking I was gonna say looking down on her looking up at her and keeping her safe and and I I much preferred that kind of reveal Mm -hmm. um as opposed to you know oh and and we did this oh well that's all solved then Yeah, yeah yeah I would have liked there to be a little bit more conflict um, I would have liked it to be maybe a bit more. I know this sounds silly in like an animated, you know, uh, sci-fi comedy show, but a little bit more realistic in that we were tired and you know we we thought we were doing the best for you and maybe we fucked up, but mm-hmm. but it's really hard being a parent and um, yeah, I think I would have just <sighs> liked a little bit more depth from the heart. Uh, but I really, really did appreciate how hard this one was going in new directions. So, Teenage yeah. Mutant Leela's Hurdles. Yeah, that's that's what one. I was spending a minute trying to figure yeah, out. And yeah. where that weird sound came from. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> so uh, I am also uh, agreeing with both of you. Um, I, 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 I like this episode, um, but um, Free Will Hunting is, for me, uh, slightly better. Um I won't. You've both listed why it's a good episode. I might just talk a little bit about why I don't think Near Death Star is as good. Mm. Uh, Ellen, you're talking about kind of like the the more. Re- oh my goodness, um, the more realist stuff. I think from it's a story thing. Yeah. So we start. We we begin with Fry, and then we end with Fran, uh, Farns- Farnsworth. 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 We went to France. I know. Uh, as the protagonist, and I think that's the missed opportunity. Yeah. Is that it should be a Farnsworth centered episode, not a Fry. Then that turns into a Farnsworth episode. I. That's just me. Mm. Um. And also, there's uh, some weird animation decisions from a first time Futurama director. Um, I had a quick look at his bio. He's been directing for ages, so I don't quite know what the deal is. But like, he's a Simpsons director. Yeah, yeah. later on, but he started off as um a Tom and Jerry animator. Assistant, yes, he did too. Assistant director. Oh. Um, but like the the long cuts of Farnsworth sneaking in. Um, I felt <laughs> I that I kind of like. I felt that kind of <laughs> felt a bit flat. But also the decision, like in the conference room where Bender and um Hermes are chipping in. Um, it cuts away. It cuts to them. 
and then back mm. and then cuts back to them again. And I was just like, there's got to be... And it's a very kind of boring frame, I thought. Like, it's just them sitting there. Just a little of, odd kind of bland two shot. Yeah, it's mm. just a weird kind of like just them sitting there in prof- like just looking forward. It seems kind of not to be mean, but like dull. Like, I felt like maybe... Mm. It could, like, And the the niceness of it is that there, there's no punchline in so far as like Bender being mean to Hermes. Yeah. It's just like... It's just, they're just interjections. They're just, they're just interjections. Yeah. And I yeah. get that. But also, I don't know, maybe they, they crossed the line where it's like actually like the filmic thing of like crossing a line. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know. Uh, it just felt a bit... Um, I felt like they spent most of the time on the episode in the um, mausoleum. Yeah. Mausoleum? Near, de- <laughs> near, near Death Star. <laughs> yeah. But the, it's interesting you say that because that can kind of flatten a joke a little bit, can it? Like if it, if it was maybe we saw... Uh, like a wide of the table and just have kind of like Hermes and Bender, you know. Making their little quips. Or or maybe if it's like we see that over someone's head or Mm. so it really solidifies that like while everyone else is kind of having this thing, the two of them are quipping in the background. Exactly. Maybe that would have really, yeah, helped that because kind of otherwise it seems like an anti-joke. Yeah. Which can be good, but it needs to be there for a reason. And they they, they, they do that a lot with Bender as well, where Bender will just say jokes off screen, yeah, out yeah. of shot, and that you get the other person's reaction of, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I think there was some good animation, like the the um, mausoleum thing, the Ninth Star, but also Farnsworth in the bath was fucking hilarious. Oh god, Bathworth, <laughs> Bathworth. I tried. Um, and the, 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 <laughs> ro- the, <laughs> the writing is really good. The writing is really good. I just think the overall story structure could have been ch- like the comedy joke to joke is great. Um, fucking, uh, what is it? He fell down and we got free ice cream. Now we're going to have a nap. I'm like, fuck yes, live, <laughs> yes. Your, best, live your best life. <laughs> um, but like the, so the joke to joke moments were great. It just felt maybe the story was a bit, um, a, it swapped for Could have been stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. could have been stronger. I, yeah, I agree. Like, and and free will hunting. No, was that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> free, free will hunting. I told you, near death wish, uh, free, yeah, will free will hunting. hunting. It's tricky. It's um, stressful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like that's a Bender centered episode. We start with Bender, we end with Bender, we pretty much stay with Bender the whole There's time. No side plot. Yeah, I don't think so. I think it's a straight. Both of these are pretty much centralized. Yeah. On one mission. Whereas Fry doesn't really go anywhere. No. Yeah. He kicks it off, but he doesn't. You know. It then it then swaps. Yeah. Midway through, which is you know fine. But fine. It just, fine. But if you're comparing the two, well, yeah, it just would have been a more. Um, and if, and if the great thing about this episode is the end, where it's like an emotional. Po- like string exactly. pull, then you want to set that up at the Would start. Would have been a more heartfelt yeah. I, The first time I watched this, I think, I didn't even get why Farnsworth was happy because the the parents being tired thing didn't stick with me the first time I watched it. Yeah, yeah right. Where they were like, we're just too tired, we can't play with you. And I was like, oh, okay, that's what parents do. Mm. Um, and then when he's like, oh, I forgive you. I'm like, why? What? What happened? Why Why yeah. did they? Why is it all forgiven? What the? No, anyway. We're like, I'm, tr- I'm not to like keep comparing it to other episodes, but the... Um, well, that's what we're doing. That's, well, what we're, yeah, that's yeah, our whole yeah. podcast. Well, that's, oh, fuck. <laughs> Guys, can, we stop, can we stop the gauntlet now? I didn't read the brief. Um, no, but like Luck of the Fryerish, where we have oh. Fry keep like having flashbacks to the time. And, and, you know, you have your own bias. And like, that's the thing with him and Yancey, right? He has a, a, a biased opinion of like, and he doesn't know how much his brother loves him because he only gets the context of his brother picking on him and which is normal, you know, but a similar thing with Farnsworth might've been nice. You know, he kind of looks back on all the the things he had to do without the support of his parents. Mm. Um, And like that could have been even tied into earlier where he's like, I had a big case of the, I don't give a fuck, you know, no one, maybe, maybe it like could spring from there. No one came to my things. Yeah. No one supported me in my science. Yeah, exactly. Why should I care about you? Like, it just par- needs a my- bit more of an explanation from Farnsworth as to his motivations to, and completely- to tie those, yeah. like what he does in the first act. Imagine Farnsworth not going to the thing because he's tired. Yeah. Like for him, he literally just, he just, he just laughs. And the cats in the quiddle in the silver spoon. <laughs> exactly. He laughs. laughs. He just laughs. And it's like, oh, it's that dickhead, crazy, kooky Farnsworth. Yeah. As opposed to like, fuck you. I didn't get one. So why should you like. Which can yeah. still be cranky Farnsworth. Yeah, like, absolutely. They're like, oh yeah, he was always cranky. And it's like, yeah, he's yeah. just a cranky old man. Just cranky old man. I think it's a good episode. It's just got a few little yeah. bits that hold it back from being a really good episode. From being, yeah, from yeah. being great. Yeah. So our current winner is still Free Will Hunting. Woot woot woot. Thanks. 
So Lance, you do have a couple more uh, opportunities to to get yourself into the the gauntlet. So oh. don't fear. Keep going. You got two more episodes, mate. I mean, he's already done them. Oh, damn. Oh, is oh, he's not live. Oh. Also, future puts too much stress on the animator's yeah, hands. Right. <laughs> We have to ship this out to Korea and then get away. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a whole thing. Hey, speaking of which, what? let's get to a voice. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go with oh, Estelle Harris. Yeah. It's really hard to do a voice. Oh. But I feel like I'm just doing my friends all up. Yeah, go I with- had six wines. <laughs> oh, we were just too tired. <laughs> We love you. This one really favors you this week, actually. Um, okay. We, yeah, you had an older brother, and we just wanted to make sure that you didn't get sent to the. F- f- I was going to say factory. The factory. <laughs> to the factory. Okay, this is just going to be Gilbert Godfrey. I'm warning you now. We thought. We thought that what we would do was to take you up to the farm. <laughs> You're welcome, everyone. We just wanted you at the farm. (laughs) Carol! Just wait, quietly. Let's say we just wanted to take you to the farm, all three of us as a still at the same time. Okay, all right. And go. (laughs) We just wanted to take you to the farm! (sighs) Should that be the new opening? Yeah, that's in the next. (laughs) Ad fill in. And I knock on the door, Carol! Carol! And there's no Carol in HR! (laughs) Fuck. My tummy hurts. (laughs) So, guys, if you want more of that hot garbage... (laughs) Ellen's lost it. (laughs) She's gone. If you join back with us next week, we're going to be here to talk 31st Century Fox. That's the name of a broadcasting st- it is. programming thing. <laughs> what? Now, without having never Studio. seen this episode, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say a fox is included. Uh, it's a bird, oh. actually. Fuck. I'm, I'm thinking it's a flying fox, as in a, a piece <gasps> like of a playground equipment. equipment. Yeah. Okay. Do, Do Americans it. have that? I hope so. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. it's a great... Know, maybe, it's they a maybe gr- don't call it that. It's a great way to injure children. <laughs> so, um, America, we have a playground. And, and, and if you, no, if they is, would, because foxes are American and European. Sure, but we have foxes too. Do we? No, yeah. they're introduced. We have foxes. Uh, yeah, but all, they, our, all our jungle gym equipment is named after Australian animals, <laughs> like the kangaroo bounce. You know, the, 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 and the koala lalas. <laughs> the, the koala lalas. And the echidna, in, echidna walks. <laughs> Keep going. We and the platypus w- <laughs> bush. Got one for Wombat. And the, the wom- Quokka Morocco. I only discovered the Quokka recently. What do you mean only what? discovered it? <laughs> that it existed? Yeah, I didn't know. Discovered in 2000. you never heard that word? I'd never heard of it Discovered before. in 2019 they're little, they're little by Australian Chris man, Bond. Chris Bond. They're, they're little kangaroos. What the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, literally. I was really drunk. Potteroos? At, at an arts meeting. And they Wallabies? were like, did a Quokka just walk in? Someone was like, no, we've got quokkas. Oh and I'm would, like, what's a fucking quokka? I would love to have a quokka on the board for anything. They would just be so cute. Wait, They'd just uh, be like, quokkas are Australian, right? Yeah, look yeah. up quokka. Uh, Q-U-O-double-K-A to the listeners. Yes. Double K or single K? No, double K. K. Oh, yeah, cool. quokka. I thought it be quokka. Oh. Potteroos are also quite cute. They're another... What, uh, what the fuck, fuck is, is that? that? Oh, my God. Hang on. <laughs> Do we say quokkaroo? Australia has too much nature. How much nature do we have? Too much. I just said too much. much. Nature count is too high. Anyway, no, a flying fox would be a thing, right? Well, if it isn't, just in case it isn't, I'm sorry, listeners, if if it is a thing, but in case it isn't, it is this, um, how do you describe a flying fox? It is a handle that you hold onto and you swing yourself from one platform to a second platform and you try not to die. I'm showing Sean a potteroo now as we Is that speak. not just a quokka? What, what it? No. Okay, so I googled flying fox and I got the animal. <laughs> and I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. I came here to have a good time and yeah, honestly so I'm feeling we, so attacked right we now. Find, we find the animal, we grab onto it and it flies us around. Australia, and annoyingly, mate. the flying fox lives in the tropics of Asia, Australia and East Africa. <laughs> so there you go. 
So it doesn't help me. Doesn't prove my point. In fact, it probably goes the opposite way. Okay, so uh, listeners, there you go. A it's like a fox zip line. Is, uh, both an animal, animal and a zip line where you're not attached to anything except the handle that you're holding. Oh. It is local to Australia and New Zealand. I know. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> it's a zip line. Yes. Like from the hit game Apex Legends. Chris Sign up today. Really, Chris is real Apex bad. Legends. Hey guys, I've got a bit of a, a semi announcement to you. So. Is anyone sleeping in the house? No. What? <laughs> Not now. Look at the time. <laughs> I don't know what times people keep. <laughs> I'm not their uh, brother's keeper. I cannot tell you when, and I cannot tell you who, but uh, we will be having some, some more Futurama creatives on the program, hopefully very soon. But once again, I cannot tell you when, and I cannot tell you whom. Because it's probably like... A cell of an animation that we're just going to prop up <laughs> and talk to. It counts. Oh, hi, Fry, Fry's arm. It's about the friends we made along the way. That would be wild. You just make a joke about the Simpsons episode where it's Itchy's arm. Yeah, I did. That was deep cut. Right? Yeah. I got it. Yeah. People get these jokes. People As we get jokes. People like this thing. <laughs> Lance, Lance Cram- you know what? I've been Sean. Oh, yeah. I've been Ellen. I'm, I've been Chris. Get out of here. Go on. Thanks for tuning in. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so by emailing us at babybeardmedia at gmail.com. Our socials are Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at babybeardmedia. And if you're looking for a way to support us, the best way you can do it is by jumping onto iTunes or the podcast app and giving us a five-star rating and a nice review. goes a long way to helping us. Otherwise, if you'd like to join us next week... Anyway. Oh, what would your familiar be if you were a witch? Uh, I wouldn't be a witch. Oh. As a wizard? (sighs) You sexist son of a bitch. (laughs) Um, what would your familiar be, Ellen? Probably like a... Preston. <laughs> rabbit. Wait, yeah. can you use an existing animal? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. As long as he is uh, committed to Satan as well. Is it's he? It's all hunky-dory. As a witch. <laughs> that's You've what met you're... Preston. Yeah. No, I think Preston is Satan. Yeah, he's committed. <laughs> to himself. Yeah. To self... Um, what's the word? Flagellation. No. Worship. No, what's the thing when you when you want to improve yourself? Self-improvement. There you go. I had the word. <laughs> The word was the word that I wanted. None of this can be used. I know. I <laughs> gorilla. I do love that bears sit like Ooh, people, gorilla. though. You're going to use gorilla. No, gorilla. You're going to go gorilla as your familiar. Yeah. Why? Because the, the, Limiting. Limiting. Very. But Why are they limiting? Because you can't take them everywhere. Why not? Or I Look, if someone's taking their pet gorilla, I'm not going to argue with yeah. them. <laughs> I'm not going to be in the same carriage. We're going to Hogwarts. I'm not going to be in the same carriage as them. <laughs> Why not? Get in the room. room. <laughs> what if the, what if the gorilla go dresses up like the gorilla is wearing like a Hogwarts uniform? Well, then I probably couldn't tell the difference. Exactly. You know what I fucking learned? <laughs> Do you know what I fucking learned? What? What? Hummingbirds can't sleep. They have to hibernate. Oh. So instead of going to sleep every night, they hibernate so that basically because their metabolism is so fast, if they just went to sleep like a normal uh, creature, die. they would just die. This is what small children do. <laughs> they die. They can't sleep, so they hibernate. Oh, there's like a Twitter account that's like, it's fat bear season because all the bears are about to go into hibernation. So they're fat. Yeah. Oh, it's really wholesome. Like me, except I'm more of a fat otter. Do you hibernate? Yes. I do. Seasonal that's real affective weird. disorder. Do you know what I re- Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mine is an axolotl, by the way. Oh. Just in case anyone's wondering. <laughs>